How important is this summer for Greg Berhalter Ooh. and this national team, and for him individually in terms of going on? Because I, th- I, I maintain that this is a Fisher cut bait type of moment. Agreed. If you're ever going to make a change, it happens this summer. Is that fair? And do you think that that's ultimately what's going to happen this summer in terms of the assessment of him? I think it's more than fair. I think it's real. I think it's it's exactly what it should be. Because truth be told, Alexi, if if this summer falls flat, the project's not dead if you're worried about the World Cup. This is 24. It's not the summer of 25. I 100% agreed with you. Uh, everything about this summer is massive. First off, and I've heard you and Stu Holden talk about this, and I completely agree. Name me the significant win of this generation. We someone's got to see that at some point you've got to have that. And I get it. You got out of the group at the world cup in 2022, but it hasn't been that signature win, that definitive win that can then make all of us that have called you the golden generation of the American player actually look smart. Cause until that happens, I can give you bigger wins with lesser talented generations up to this point. I think the summer provides you the opportunity to do so. But I think it is the most important period of time for the U.S. men's national team prepping for the World Cup. Because I've said this since the moment I've gotten on TV. I don't need to see the U.S. men play Panama, Costa Rica, Trinidad anymore. I don't. Because if the goal is to win a World Cup, then you've got to find a way to survive South America. You've got to find a way to survive Europe. That is where the quality of the world is occupies and lives and thrives. And until you do that, you don't know that answer. Now, granted, Panama is in their Copa America group. That's part of the equation. But Alexi, I don't need to see another CONCACAF game. I don't. The U.S. men need to be tested against the best in the world if the aspirations are to win a World Cup. This summer provides that. And if they are flat, the way we saw in the second game against Trinidad, I get a January camp game, but it doesn't matter against the Slovenia. You can't, it can't be flat anymore. There's no more. Well, the, Greg's finding his feet. No, he's not. He's been at the helm for how long? This is his second tenure. I think all the pressure in the world needs to be on Greg needs to be on the players to perform this summer. And if they do rock and roll, let's go. But if they don't, you've got to be strong enough to recognize maybe a change is needed. I think all the pressure in the world needs to be on Greg Berhalter. I really do. Uh, When you came on last year at this time, Christian Pulisic was wallowing on the bench at Chelsea. I asked you about him. You said he had to go somewhere where he was going to start every week, even if that meant taking a step back. Uh, Fast forward, when your Gio Reyna found himself in a similar situation at Dortmund, he opted for this loan to Forrest. That feels like a temporary solution. It does. Uh, Long term, uh, what do you see for Gio? What would you recommend? Are you concerned about his situation? I am concerned. Uh, I'm concerned for multiple reasons. One, you change representation, right? And so when you change representation, obviously your contacts change. Who's now representing them? That isn't really public. I'm, I'd be intrigued to know who's representing that because if you're really leaving Dortmund for Forrest, when six weeks before that, four months before that, Seville was Seville was the one where everyone was telling me that's where he's going to end up going. Now I get it. They're in a relegation battle, but La Liga suits Giovanni Reyna. A relegation battle in English Premier League does not suit Giovanni Reyna. I don't care who you are and who you try to convince me on that. That's not going to work. With what happened at the World Cup, I am concerned that Gio will be now chasing this all the way around trying to find himself when this is the most important part of his, I would say, player identification period of understanding who he is and who he wants to be. He is young enough to still have an unbelievable career. But these are the trying times as a player when you find out who you are and who you want to be. I don't know if he's going to get that answered for us. I hope I'm wrong because that means it helps Geo. It helps the U.S. men's national team. But I feel like when I come on this podcast this summer and we're previewing the Copa America and League's Cup and all this, I think we're going to have the same conversation. Where's Gio going to end up? What's his best team? Can he play in a system that doesn't suit just a pseudo 10 and an attacking player, someone that's got to contribute on both sides? I think we're going to be having this conversation in four months. I do, unfortunately, but I hope I'm wrong. You like that clip? 
Well, my State of the Union podcast drops twice a week right here on my very own YouTube page. The only way to stay up to date is to hit that subscribe button down below. Size the day and see you soon.